94b and um, this is about six seven lines from the bottom the uh, the Gemara is dealing with the opinion of Rabbi uh, uh, of Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer's opinion is uh, Rabbi Eliezer's opinion is that um, the the obligation of of um, bringing a carbon pesach or, or being um, pushed away for the carbon pesach for the first time for uh, in Nissan to postpone to the second is and in it doesn't mean that you're actually um, uh, that far away but rather um, in this in this case means even just being outside of Yerushalayim uh, or outside of the sorry the first opinion in the Mishnah is outside of the uh, uh, gates of the the doorway of the Azara that's sufficient to be considered uh, outside and um, to that the uh, Gemara is now going to bring another opinion that says that um, it, it only it, it, it doesn't mean that you're outside of the uh, Beis HaMikdash but outside of Yerushalayim and this is based on two opinions um, the uh, Gemara says Tanoi Rava Amar Tanoi this is Machlok is Tanoi the time we learned Rabbi Eliezer Oimer Nema Richuk Mokim Pesach. It says if somebody's at a distance on carbon, uh, in, in regards to bringing the carbon Pesach, Nema Richuk Mokim B'Maser. And it also says in the uh, Maser Rishon, uh, uh, the sorry Maser Sheni, the halacha is that you have to bring the Maser to Yerushalayim. The person has a tithe. That tithe, the Maser that he has, is going to require that he is going to. Um, uh, 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 bring it up to Yerushalayim and eat it only in Yerushalayim. Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Sorry. We got it. Can you see me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So um, in the in regards to Miser, in regards to the 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 uh, tithe, the the second Miser, you have to bring it up to Yerushalayim and eat in Yerushalayim. And that Miser, um, uh, there too it says that if somebody is at a distance, you would have to bring it up to Yerushalayim. Uh, and what's considered outside of, uh, of uh, uh, what's considered a distance there? What, uh, just over there, that um, uh, the uh, the distance me is referring to outside of the area that you're allowed to eat it. You're allowed to eat it in Yerushalayim. And a distance would be when you're beyond the place that you're allowed to eat it. So too over here, Afkan chutz lachilosin. So to over here, the meaning of being outside means outside of Yerushalayim, where you're allowed to eat it. Um, so therefore, according to our beliefs, we're going to have it, not that the distance is uh, when you're just outside the Beis HaMikdash, but rather when you're just outside Yerushalayim. Rabbi Yezir, Rabbi Yehuda, Eimei Meshem Rabbi Eliezer. However, Rabbi Yezir, the son of Rabbi Yehuda, he says in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, Chutz Yase. No, it's not outside of where you are allowed to eat it. But outside, where you're allowed to bring it and do it. So, based on that, whose opinion is this? Uh, by the Tame, how do we define the majority of the community being Tame? Which Allah is, that we saw earlier, that if the majority of the community is Tame, that we bring the carbon Pesach, even though that it's Tame, we're going to bring it in the first, uh, um, on the 14th of Nisan at the first Pesach. Command uh, and he says that we're going to go after the majority of the people in the courtyard of the uh, Beis Hamikdash. In other words, maybe the majority of Bnei Israel around the world, or around Eretz Israel, even around Yerushalayim, they are Tahor. Uh, but the majority of the people in the Azara Tame, that's going to define the majority Tame. Why would that be the definition? Because according to Rabbi Yehuda, in the name of Rabbi Eliezer, we just said that. 
that you're exempt of the carbon Pesach if you're outside the courtyard of the base of Mikdash. So you don't count as the majority because you're not in the mitzvah at this point. Come on, Rabbi Yisab Yehuda, Omar Mishum Rabbi Yehuda. Omar the Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda said, and we saw in in our Mishnah that um, that Rabbi Yehuda responded with an understanding of the pasuk based on uh, Rabbi Yehuda. Now that you said Rabbi Yehuda, that uh, that uh, what the definition of being a, a, on a, a, a at a distance, um, a, a, a derech rachoka, a path that's far away. Um, and you said that that just means standing outside the wall of Yerushalayim. So um, uh, that's why it makes sense that there's a dot on the hay to tell you that it doesn't really mean all that far. Tanya, Rabbi Yisak Lili, Eimer, Derech. Rabbi Yisak Lili said, if the Pasuk had just said a path, he's on a, dis- he's on a path, then I would have said, Shemeani, Mahalach Shneim Shlashiyam, and perhaps it means that he's at a distance of two, three days. Derech, he's on the on the way. Kashuaimer uva derech loyhoya. It says, and on the way he was not. He was not on the way. Magid, that tells me he wasn't on the way at all. Uh, but it was. It, but even just outside of the doorway, it's still on the way. You haven't arrived yet. Shamei maskufas azaru lechutz kari derech. So that tells us from the fact that the Torah says it in the negative as well, and he was not on the uh, 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 derech, he was not on the way, tells us that indeed just being outside of the askufa is sufficient to, uh, uh, outside of the doorway of the Beis HaMikdash is sufficient, or the courtyard is sufficient to say that somebody is uh, uh, is at a distance and therefore exempt of the Korban Pesach. Um, and that would concur with the the version that says Rabbi Yaza holds outside of uh, the Azara. Indeed, also outside of Yerushalayim, we can have the same explanation if living would mean arriving to Yerushalayim. And this is a different uh, textual proof or textual uh, um, uh, uh, inference that than we have in our Mishnah, where it says a dot on the hay indicates that that it's not exactly all that far. Uh, that were, Today's daf is daf tzadi hey, and so we're here at uh, the Mishnah, beginning of the daf, and two introductions. One, up until now, we we're talking about the obligation for somebody to be postponed from the first Pesach to the second Pesach, and who is postponed. Now we have to deal with, so what does it look like to bring a carbon Pesach uh, on the 14th of year on the makeup date of, of uh, Pesach Sheni? Um, it, the Torah tells us uh, uh, four things about the carbon Pesach there. It, three specific rules. Um, it, it, it says uh, um, uh, the obligation not to leave it, um, uh, not to leave it over, and the obligation not to break a bone in it, and uh, to to eat it roasted. And then it says all the rules of carbon pesach kechol chukas pesach yasois. So. Um, uh, uh, the the uh, uh, the obligation of al matzah or mororim yochlu to eat it on um, matzah and maror, that's not about the carbon pesach itself. That's something that pertains to uh, the the condiments or, you, or or the way you're going to eat the carbon pesach. Um, the obligation of not leaving it over is a prohibition. Um, which pertains to the carbon Pesach itself, uh, but it also has a, uh, um, it, it also is a nitak la'ase. It also has a positive commandment after that. Don't leave any over. And if you did, burn it. So that's the the category of the second specific rule. And the third specific rule, don't break a bone. That pertains to the carbon Pesach. It pertains to the, the carbon Pesach itself and a prohibition um, uh, a, a, a proper prohibition. Now, uh, there we have a general rule when there's a a, um, a prat uklal, if there's a specification and a generalization, the generalization really uh, generalizes and includes everything. So over here, the Torah says a specification, um, uh, uh, three of uh, three of them actually, and then it says the generalization. <laughs> Like all the rules of the Karm Pesach, you shall do with it. Now, so this rule of of uh, 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 kla, a prat uklal, 
where the generalization will include everything above the specification and the specification is going to simply minimize one thing doesn't necessarily really apply here because the Torah would, it should have only given one specification. Why did the Torah give three specifications? And so uh, one version of the, uh, one opinion in the Gemara is going to tell us that when something like this happens, we have a, 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 a specification and generalization. So each, each specification is going to have one thing like it that is included and one thing like it that's excluded. The generalization includes something like it, but the specification tells you that it's that it ex- excludes something like it. And based on that, we have our Mishnah. So what distinctions are there between the first Pesach and the second Pesach? The Torah uh, it says that d- during Pesach and all of your uh, property and all of your borders, you shall not find chametz. Uh, um, but for the second Pesach, you can have chametz in your home. You have matzah as well, because you're going to eat the carbon Pesach with matzah. But together with the matzah, you also have chametz in the house. You're not going to eat it together with the carbon Pesach, but you're going to have matzah in the house. Another distinction, the first one, when you eat the carbon Pesach, you also have to say the Haggadah, you're going to do the Hallel with it. And the second one does not require singing Hallel when you eat the carbon Pesach. So Hallel is not a part of the Seder for the, for the uh, second Pesach. However, both of them require that when you make the carbon Pesach in the Beis HaMikdash, it's going to require um, that you sing Hallel uh, in, as a part of the service of bringing the carbon Pesach. And they all, uh, both of them would have to uh, be eaten roasted. Al and eaten together with matzah mar, as the pasuk says. Shabbos, and they supersede Shabbos. So the fourteenth of Pesach, the fourteenth of Nisan, and the fourteenth of Iyar, being Pesach Rishon or Pesach Sheni, will both supersede Shabbos if that day is Shabbos. Either of them is Shabbos, it'll be a supersede. Tanarabon. So the Brisa talks. The Torah says you shall do to it meaning to the carbon itself, uh, like all the rules of, uh, of uh, the Pesach. Now, since it says, yase oisoi, it, so it means only about the, the, the mitzvahs pertaining to the carbon itself. Um, that's specific to the mitzvah of the guf, the, meaning to what pertains to the lamb, to the carbon itself. She'al guf, I mean, I, what about what's secondary to it, such as, Eating it with mara, eating it with matzah. Um, that's what's on the body. How do we know? The Torah specifically says, eat it with the uh, uh, matzah and mara, or upon matzah and mara, to tell you that even not only what pertains to the mitzvah itself, uh, but uh, uh, meaning to the lamb, but also what pertains to that which is around it, also is going to be an obligation. Perhaps also other mitzvahs that have nothing to do with the carbon itself, but rather uh, around the house. So therefore the Torah uh, um, um, repeats the, it gives the specification of don't break a bone in it. Just as breaking the bone is specific, a mitzvah a mitzvah about the body of the, of the carbon itself. I've called Mitzvah Shabbat So also the rest are also that we're including for the second Pesach pertain only to the Mitzvah itself of the carbon Pesach. However, Yisab and Yehuda Eimer, he disagrees. He says, Yasu Eisai b'Mitzvah Shabbat Gufay Kasev Now only what pertains to the carbon Pesach itself, because the Torah says Yasu Eisai, you shall do to it, it the carbon Pesach. That's it. So the Gemara is going to analyze this and bring a brisa to 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 explain the. Sukim, the verses based on this. Amar Mar, Yochalach Mitzvah Shal Gufay. So first, the, we said it says Yasu Oisay. The carbon Pesach, you should do it like all the rules of the carbon Pesach pertaining to the lamb itself. And then you say, well, maybe also what's uh, surrounding the, the 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 meat, not only the, the the carbon itself, but also what's around it. Wait, but you just told me that it's only pertaining to the carbon itself. Amar is Mitzvah Shal Gufay Kasem Adavit. So this is what it means. 
However, now that the Torah besides for the generalization of saying, like all the rules of the carbon Pesach, you will do it, the carbon Pesach, it also says, right before that, eat it with the matzah and mar. So that's not pertaining directly to the carbon. It's pertaining around it, now, how to eat it, what, what else you're going to eat with it. So that's uh, uh, around it. Alma, Yasu Isilav Dafka. So now we already know that when the Torah says you shall do it, the carbon Pesach, it doesn't mean only it, but it also includes that which is around it. So now I have to see the limit to that. Ema, Havale Kaprata So maybe it's like a, spe- a, general, a specification and a generalization. Vanasa Klal, Moisef Alaprat. And then the generalization really adds everything to the specification. And therefore, everything should be included. You have to do everything like Pesach the first time around. You have to do it now again. Kamash Malan, that's why we have the teaching to tell us now that there are specifications, three specifications to tell you these three types of things we're going to add. And we're going to exclude anything that doesn't pertain to the carbon Pesach itself. However, Isa ben Yehuda, I add some of them. Isa ben Yehuda disagreed. And he said, no, we'll only learn the rules that pertain to the carbon Pesach itself. What's he do with the, the, uh, the explicit uh, verse that says, We saw earlier the question of whether there's a, a prohibition of breaking a bone that has marrow in it. Maybe not breaking a bone is it only if there's no marrow, but if there's marrow, there's a way that you need to break it in order to eat the marrow. That's what we said that it repeats the uh, concept of not breaking the bone here to tell you that that's included, that the, uh, either way, any type of bone shall not be broken. And what did the Rabbanan do with, now that we say that it includes even things that are not, inc- not directly to the carbon Pesach itself, but even secondarily to it, so what, why does it say, Yasa Isa, you shall do it? It tells us that Yasu uh, Isa, you, you, plural, you shall do, uh, they shall do the second Pesach to tell you that the second Pesach is not brought with a single individual. That if there's only one Tame person in all of Am Yisrael, that we're going to say that somebody else has to be Tame as well in order to bring the second carbon Pesach. Um, the the um, Rashi brings that, that we would even tell somebody to make themselves tame in Nisan so that it will be at least two people to bring the carbon Pesach second time around. Now, usually I assume that there's going to be more than two people to bring uh, to, that were tame the first time around or at a distance and couldn't make it that will bring the second carbon Pesach and they could join up. But the idea is that you would need at least two people. You wouldn't do it as a, for an individual. So now the Brisa is going to bring the, the Psukim and analyze the Psukim uh, as we had arranged them in the introduction. Three categories are mentioned. This is pertaining to the, uh, um, uh, to, uh, uh, the, the lamb itself in a positive uh, commandment, al mechlu, eat the carbon Pesach together with Matzah In a lava nitikla say, in a prohibition that also has a remedy to the prohibition. The Torah says, do not leave any over, and if you do, you shall burn it. And the third is a general prohibition, Elav. These three are the categories of speci- or, 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 or the three specifications that the Torah says that before it says general, like all the rules of the carbon Pesach, you will do it. So um, before that, it gives three specific halachas. So those three are uh, fit in these three categories, and the Bryce is going to learn a uh, inclusion for each one of these that are similar in that category, and an exclusion of something that is not in that category. The Torah says you shall do it like all the rules of Pesach. I may think, okay, so just as the first covenant Pesach, you may not have and may not even see chametz uh, in your possession. So too in the carbon uh, for the second Pesach, al matzah Therefore, the Torah says you will eat it with matzah and mar, and uh, uh, there's an, an exemption in that that um, um, you will um, 
eat it with matzah, but you can still, uh, you don't have to not have mark. Fine, so that's a positive mitzvah. Mitzvah's leisa semi night. So, so how do I know that also prohibitions? So it says, don't leave any over to the morning. And okay, so that's a, a prohibition, but it's a prohibition that the Torah specifies how to fix it by burning it the next morning. What about a, 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 a general loisase? Mitzvah's loisase gomer minai, just a prohibition without a fix in the Torah. Do not break a book. So the Gemara now explains the process of deduction in this in, in this uh, verse or verses. Ma prat mafurish mitzah say v'leisa say shenitekla say v'leisa say gomur. Just as the specifications have these three categories, a positive commandment and I'll say, a leisa say shenitekla say a negative commandment, meaning a prohibition, but it has the fix the the, the correction in in place in the Torah. And let's say gamur, also just a general prohibition. So perhaps we would include every prohibition, uh, um, prohibition that has uh, the 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 remedy, the fix in the Torah, and a mitzvah, and a positive command. The the matzah samaroid um, mari. Now that, that we specified matzah and mar, that you shall eat the karm pesach with matzah mar. So the Torah generalize and said like all the rules that generalization is adding to that what's in that category of a positive commandment that you, we will add because of this sliesh that just as the torah commanded in the first pesach that you have to eat it um, roasted by fire not cooked in a pot not raw not rare not uh, in water so sliesh uh um and uh, th- that's the the addition of the positive commandment. So we have the Torah gives a positive commandment, a an say, eat it with matzah and mar. And then it says, like all the rules of Pesach, that adds to that, eat it uh, roasted. However, since it specified it and didn't just give the generalization, so the specification also limits. What's that limit? What the, the, the specification is limiting something. What is that? Hashbasa sa'or. The positive commandment that exists in the first Pesach, where it says, and you shall remove chametz from your house, that uh, positive commandment is not there. That positive commandment is removed and, and, and uh, by, the, by the limit in this, in this context, where the Torah specified a few things and then, and then generalized. To t- the specification tells you there is a positive commandment that is not included, and that's the one that doesn't pertain to the Pesach itself. So the positive commandment that pertains to the karma, which is roasting it, that that it still applies. The positive commandment that does not pertain to the Pesach itself, but rather secondarily, it's out there, uh, um, uh, such as uh, this one, which is not uh, 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 removing the chametz, which is not about the Pesach, but it's in your home. It's it's sec- it, it, it's it, it's not attached to the carbon. That does not apply. The Gemara says, Mitzvah the Gufei Adif. Maybe it's the other way around. So the Gemara says, No, because this pertains to the carbon Pesach itself. So I understand if there's a limit and there's an ex- exclusion and an inclusion in the positive commandments, the inclusion is going to pertain to the carbon Pesach roasting it, and the exclusion is going to pertain to what doesn't pertain to the carbon Pesach is going to be of something that doesn't pertain to the Gom Pesach, and that's the, the uh, uh, um, obligation of removing comments. Now, in the second uh, step, it says, the, uh, in the, the uh, prohibition that is attached to a remedy, to a fix, where it says, don't leave over to the morning, and then if you did, you should burn it. So, what are we adding? We're adding another prohibition that would also have a fix, where the Torah says, don't take it out of your house, don't take it out of its space that it's supposed to be. And uh, if you did, you have to immediately bring it back. So the, 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 that's a prohibition that has a remedy, uh, which is similar to the prohibition of don't leave it over, and if you did, burn it. And also that the, these are very similar prohibitions, the prohibition of leaving over and the prohibition of taking it out of its place. And, and in the specification, what's it limiting? 
my kamamayit lately or overlay matzah. The prohibition of don't have chametz, and if you do, to to destroy it. So that that's also a prohibition that has a fix to it. So again, the the specification and the generalization are telling us that this category of a lava nitikla say of a prohibition that has a fix. We're going to find one fix, one prohibition that has a fix that is included and one that's excluded. What's included? Don't take it out of its place, and if you did, bring it back. And what's excluded? Don't have chametz in your house, and if you do, destroy it. Now, um, the, uh, which is also the dummy lay. It's similar to high in the have a lav shenit the klasay, the high in the loike the have a lav shenit the klasay. They they both have the positive commandment attached to it, and I would also ask. The same question, maybe it's the reverse. Maybe include not having chametz and, and, and limit and exclude the prohibition of not taking the chametz, uh, the mat, the, not taking the Pesach out of its place. And where it says again, no, since we said, do it as all the rules of Karm Pesach. So the inclusion is always going to be something about the Karm Pesach itself, such as not taking it out of its place. But it will, the exclusion is going to limit things, uh, prohibitions that don't pertain to the carbon Pesach, such as not having comets in your house. In the third specification was don't break a bone. So that, what about that specification where the Torah says don't break a bone of the carbon Pesach, even in the second Pesach? Now we turn the page to the Tzavi Hey Amen base. My Kamarbi. So what are we including in this category of a general prohibition? Not to eat it when it's rare or raw. And what kind of prohibition are you uh, uh, excluding and not is not included here? The Torah says, don't shech the korban Pesach when you have chametz uh, in your possession. Uh, and so that, so all of the chametz prohibitions are excluded and all the prohibitions pertaining to the carbon Pesach uh, are included. Uh, eating it, uh, you have the obligation of eating it raw, uh, so eating it uh, roasted, the, um, the uh, uh, prohibition of taking it out of its place, and the prohibition of eating it uh, when it's not fully cooked. Now, again, we're going to ask, why are you including the prohibition of, of eating it raw, uh, rare? while excluding the prohibition of shechting the, chav, the Pesach um, while owning chametz. Now here, it's a little tricky because the second one also is pertains to the carbon Pesach, right? It says don't shech the, the carbon while owning chametz. But still, the prohibition or, or the, the, the causal point of the pro- prohibition here is because you have chametz. That's secondary to the carbon Pesach, whereas eating it rare is directly to the carbon Pesach. So again, maybe we would switch it. It's clear from you shall do the carbon Pesach. Uh, um, you do it like all the rules of the carbon Pesach. Tell me that whatever we're including is going to be included in the carbon Pesach itself. So uh, essentially the Torah said three uh, specifications. Uh, they are exist in three category types of mitzvahs. A positive, a negative that has a positive attached to it, and a negative alone. And uh, they each include something in that category, um, a, a positive, a negative that has a positive connected to it, and a, a negative, and an, each one excludes something that's in that category. And that's the way we get to these halachas, uh, the, or the, the Torah um, alludes to these halachas, that the carbon Pesach has to be eaten with matzah mar, and it has to have been roasted. It has to be... Um, uh, the, the prohibition of not leaving any over and also not taking it out of its place, and also the prohibition of uh, uh, of not breaking a bone or eating it rear. And what's excluded are the po- the positive commandment of not uh, of of getting rid of your chametz, not owning any chametz in your possession, and not shechting the carbon while you're in possession of chametz. The Mishnah further said that the first um, uh, Karben Pesach is obligated in, in singing Hallel at the Seder, whereas not so in the second Pesach. How do we know this? Yoshaya Navi says that this song, the, 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 the um, redemption and the, and the 
uh, song of redemption that will, uh, in the future time when Mashiach comes, that will be a, 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 a song like the night of the, of the holiday that has been sanctified. Now, so we see song comes at a night of the holiday that is sanctified. But if the, the second Pesach, it comes at a time that there's, there's no prohibition of work. You can you can light fires and you can and 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 you can do. I mean, it's not a yuntif, so it's not a leilas chadish chag. She'ema kudosh chag into an hell. So the night that doesn't have the sanctification of uh, 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 of yuntif does not require the singing of the song, because we see from Yeshayahu that the singing of the song is connected to the the. Um, Isr Malacha and to the sanctification of that night as a Yantav. However, the Mishnah said that both of these require, while making the carbon Pesach, to sing Halal. Zevazetun and Halbasi Yosan, my time. So, what's the basis for that? Either we can say from that verse itself, which indicates the night doesn't have a song unless it's sanctified, but the day, the bringing of the carbon, does. Or so this is a phrase, borrowed phrase from a brisa we'll see later in Daf uh, Kofiud Zion in just uh, 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 twenty days or so. Um, and and it says over there that it cannot be that the bringing of the carbon pesach or the bringing of the lulav would not come along with halal. So it seems that there's. Uh, uh, something about the the service of of uh, uh, the carbon pesach and the service of of uh, lulav that would require a song coming along with it and that and therefore the the bringing of the carbon pesach in the base of mikdash requires halil whereas uh, um, uh, and this pertains to really the, a part of the service of the base of mikdash. Whereas the nighttime, when you're eating it at home, that doesn't require halal. The Mishnah further said that it has to be eaten roasted. And um, also that it, it supersedes Shabbos. So it only mentions Shabbos in the Mishnah. And it doesn't say that it supersedes Tumah. Um, Shabbos in Tumah That it only supersedes Shabbos, but it would not supersede Tumah. Masnita the Lekar Rabbi So then our Mishnah is not like the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, the Tanya we learned, Doiches HaShabbos Vendiches HaTumah. That indeed, the second Pesach supersedes Shabbos. So if 14th of Iyar turns out to be, um, it turns out to be Shabbos, you bring the carbon Pesach, even though that it's Shabbos, because that's the set time for it. However, it does not supersede Tumah. Tuma. That if the person himself bringing the carbon Pesach is now tummy. He was tummy the first time, uh, first uh, Pesach, and now he's tummy again. He's not going to bring the carbon Pesach. However, if you said to no, you bring the second Pesach even if he's tummy. My time. What's the basis for these arguments? The Tanakhama. So the first opinion says, What's the reason he didn't do the first carbon Pesach? Because he was tummy. Now you're going to let him do the makeup date when he's got the same problem that he had the first time round. That doesn't make sense. So if he if he couldn't do it the first time round because of the tuma, so the second time as well he can't do it because of the tuma. Rabbi Yehuda and, and Rabbi Yehuda says no. The Torah tried to give him an opportunity to do it while tar. He can't. He can't. So then he'll bring it even He didn't merit. So at least he'll bring it while he's tummy. Turn our abundance whoever brisa pesach rishu deches hashabbos pesach sheni deches hashabbos. Uh, the Brisa says, just as the first Pesach supersedes Shabbos, you bring the carbon Pesach even if the 14th of Nisan was on Shabbos. So too, if the 14th of Iyar, the Pesach Sheni is on Shabbos, you're going to do it as well. Pesach Risha in Ma'atuma, Pesach Sheni Dechazatuma. So too, just as the first Pesach in a communal setting, if the community is Tame, it'll supersede to uh, Tuma, and the, the obligation of the carbon Pesach will be to be brought, even though that the majority of of uh, 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 people are tummy. So too, the second Pesach will be brought, even though that there's um, there's tuma. Another day, and here there's a, a a mitzvah which we haven't really encountered yet. Um, this is the mitzvah selina. Now, when somebody brings a carbon 
really any carbon, um, uh, and and specifically for for uh, sukkahs, it would be for all, um, 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 for the entirety of the sukkahs. That when you bring a carbon, the the pilgrimage or the uh, the, the coming up to your shalayim to bring the carbon requires that you stay overnight until the next morning, and this is taught in lina that the not the carbon but the person himself has to remain in your shalayim overnight. Um, uh, and by sukkahs, it's really for the duration of the chag. Pesach, uh, ma, so, so we say, Pesach um, Rishon, Ta'an Lina. And just as the first Pesach, there's an obligation to remain in Yerushalayim overnight. Pesach Sheni, Ta'an Lina. The first, uh, the second Pesach also, whoever brings the carbon Pesach, can't just eat the carbon Pesach and then go home. He has to remain there overnight to the next morning. And uh, uh, the, it, this is, um, there is a Pesach for this. The, um, uh, the, the, um, Torah says that you will, you will, um, in the next morning, you will wake up and you will go uh, on your way. You will go home. Now, so the Gemara says, So this Brisa had mentioned that it supersedes Tuma. That's like Rabbi Yehuda. Come on, Rabbi Yehuda. So the Gemara says, Ula Rabbi Yehuda, Lina. Wait, if you said that this, the author of this Brisa is Rabbi Yehuda because he says that, that the second Pesach also supersedes Tuma, well then, does he say that you have to stay overnight? How do we know that the second Pesach is even less than a regular carbon? Not only is it not like a Yantif or like Sukkot, where you maybe have to remain uh, um, uh, for the duration of the Chag, but it's not even like a regular carbon, which any carbon a person brings, generally the Allah is that you have to stay until the next morning. This carbon Pesach of the second Pesach, you don't even have to do that. How, did, how do we know that? So the Rabbi Yudah says, for it says, it says that um, you will eat uh, meat and you will go wake in the morning and you will go to your tent. And it says over there, you will eat matzahs for six days. It's only the carbon that requires a six day matzah uh, after that, meaning. The, re- the first Pesach, that requires Lina, requires remaining overnight. Uh, however, this carbon, which does not require eating the carbon Pesach six days, it does not require staying overnight. So now we have, according to Rabbi Yehuda himself, that you know, you know there's no requirement of Lina. So there are two opinions that agree with Rabbi Yehuda or, or students of Rabbi Yehuda in regards to the Carbon Pesach, the second Pesach superseding Tuma. Yet, in regards to staying overnight, they one uh, says that uh, Rabbi Yehuda says yeah, you have to stay overnight, and, uh, like all other carbonas. And one says no, there's a limit here. And so, even though that almost every carbon you have to remain overnight, um, this second Pesach does not require. The um, Mishnah now goes into. Uh, when the Pesach is brought in Tuma, whether the second Pesach, which is brought in Tuma, or the first Pesach, which is brought in Tuma, who is included in allow, that is allowed to bring the carbon Pesach when the community, the majority of communities, Tame, and the Torah says, the carbon Pesach, we saw earlier, the Torah specifically said somebody is Tame Mace, somebody who had come into contact with a deceased person. There are other Tumas as well that would be uh, excluded from bringing the first Pesach and then uh, be postponed to the second Pesach, as we saw. However, if the communal, if there's a communal Tumah, meaning the majority of Bnei Israel are Tame, or as we saw in some opinions, the majority of a certain tribe are Tame, uh, then we bring the Karm Pesach, even though that they are Tame. Who, however, certain Tumas would not be included in, in uh, that Tumah. A Pesach Shabbat a Tumah. Lo yoch lememenu azavim azavis nidas v'yildas. That a, uh, a Zav, someone had an abnormal semen emission, a Zav is an abnormal uh, uh, menstrual flow or a reg- Nidos, a regular menstrual flow, or Yildas, or a birth, they don't eat of that carbon Pesach, even though that it's brought in Tumah, but the Torah specified and said that it can be uh, um, eaten uh, um, uh, in somebody who's tummy mace. And so these Tumahs that come out of their own body uh, would not be included in the permission of eating this carbon Pesach in Tumah. However, 
but if they did eat it, they would be exempt of the kares prohibition, uh, the punishment, which is the punishment usually for somebody who has a tuma from uh, from a, a personal tuma eating a karma. Rabbi Eliezer Peter Afabias Mikdash. Rabbi Eliezer extends that prohibition, that, sorry, that exemption, and says that even if they 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 went into the base of Mikdash, which they shouldn't have done, you know, because they themselves are tummy, they enter the base of Mikdash in Tuma when they themselves are tummy. Nevertheless, the the punishment would not apply because since there is a communal carbon happening right now at, at that time uh, that is being brought in Tuma, so even though that their particular Tuma is not included, uh, nevertheless. The, the punishment, the severity is going to be released. Turn what about around. a Nazar? So a Nazar itself is not tummy. A Nazar is simply has a prohibition of being tummy, an additional prohibition of being tummy, right? So he can bring the carbon Pesach. Uh, a, a Nazar that would, had become tummy and now has to restart his Nazar, his Nazirus, his Nazarite oath, that that will depend on the Tumah. Whichever Tumah he had um, will, if it's tummy mace, so then it'll uh, then it'll be included in the uh, exemption for tummy mace. Tanarban. So the brisa now elaborates. Zavim mazavim snidus viyodus, as we had in the Mishnah, um, these bodily uh, um, tumas. Shaochu pesach. If they ate the pes the second pe- the the pe- carbon pesach, what type of pesach? A pesach that the community is all tummy, so it's coming. So the pesach itself could be tummy. Shabbat tuma. Yachalich ayavim. Perhaps still. Since the Torah didn't give them an exemption that they are they transgress and they are uh, punishable by kares, the Torah says it like this: Only someone who is tahar may eat of the carbon that's for Hashem, and a, a soul that uh, uh, that it has tumah upon themselves that eats of the carbon, their soul is cut off from its source. Now. That juxtaposition tells us only a tahar may eat it. If a ta- if tummy eats it, his soul's cut off. Which tells us that if even tummy people are allowed to eat this carbon, then this punishment doesn't apply. Nechalatahirim. If only tahar people eat it, chayavan al mishum tummy. So then one is liable for eating it while tummy. She'ena nechalatahirim. However, if it's not only eaten by tahar people, it's eaten even by tummy people. So when a Tomei person in a different type of category of Tumah that eats this, they will not have, be liable and subject to the punishment. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer takes it one step further and says, If these list, this list of, of, of personal Tumas that push themselves into the Azara itself, in a Pesach that anyhow is coming in, in Tomei, perhaps they'd be liable so it's the same thing. The Torah juxtaposes and says, you will exclude or send out of the camp anybody that has a saras or a, 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 a abnormal semen emission or anybody that's tummy nefesh that had come in contact with a deceased. So we see that when somebody who came into contact with the dead, a, a tummy mace is excluded from the camp, that's when you also include from the camp the tzaru and zav. And so too over here, where a, 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 uh, someone who came into contact with the dead, a tummy mace, is not excluded from the camp. In fact, they're coming in to the base to the Azara and bringing a carbon. So then, the the the, the limits of a zav and a zava, zav and mitzorayin, would not be sent out of the camp. And tomorrow we'll ask questions how far to extend this idea of Rabbi Eliezer, that, uh, that uh, a Zav, a Mitzar, somebody that's tummy, that went farther than they're allowed, whether they are held liable or not. Ashokach.